This video is for all of my friends who have been working corporate jobs and find that for whatever reason, they're no longer working those corporate jobs. And they're looking to redefine their relationship with work and potentially with how they spend their time. If you've just finished a corporate job and your goal is to move on to the next corporate job as quickly as possible, this is not the video for you. But if you are thinking about how to redefine your life, one of the things that many of us find most difficult is time management. As a busy executive, you have been thinking about your time constantly. How do I use every minute efficiently? How do I be effective in my use of time? And suddenly you find yourself in a situation where you actually have an abundance of time, but you're still driven to think about how can I use that time as effectively as possible. If you're like me, when you were a corporate executive or working in a large corporation, you spent time thinking about all the different ways you could be more efficient. There are whole bookshelves and libraries and bookstores that are dedicated to the effective use of time. I'm going to share a picture of my own bookcase and the series of books that fall into that category. The, the challenge is that if you are looking to really change your life, you, not, you don't need to be more structured and more efficient with your use of time. In some situations, you need to be unstructured and create the opportunities for serendipity. Uh, as a former colleague once said to me, James, you have been running and driving in fifth gear. You need to find a way to bring it down to first gear. To which my response was, yeah, yeah, I'm already there. And his point was, if you have been driving hard in fifth gear for a long time, you don't even know what it feels like to actually take time to coast and let things just happen to you. You need to go from a mentality where you say no to everything. Because if you are an effective executive, you are very protective of your time. You say no to anything that doesn't have a clear payoff. And so my initial philosophy was, it's great that I'm connecting with this person, but what is it going to lead to? Is it going to lead to a new career, a career change, a new job, some consulting work? I was always fast forwarding into all the possibilities of whether this was an effective use of my time. But what you can find is that you need a different set of books. You, if you have the luxury of doing nothing, and I appreciate it is a luxury that not everybody can afford, but if you have that luxury, you need to start changing the books that are on your bookshelf. You need to read books about different life stages, books on how to be mindful and appreciative of your current situation. Sam Harris, Eckhart Tolle, you need to read books on how to design your life as a series of experiments like a product manager. Again, I appreciate that not everybody has the benefit of a meandering lifestyle and the luxury that you have to be able to do that, but it leads to a more satisfying life. What I found was that as I started saying yes to more things, uh, that I started reconnecting with people who I had sort of shut off, who I'd been saying no to or I hadn't had time for. And it led to extremely useful and enjoyable uh, circumstances. It wasn't necessarily that I set out to build a consulting or a, uh, advisory practice, but I appreciated that possibility. Take this video as an example. Most people would tell you that if you're trying to be as efficient as possible at doing a YouTube video, you should be handing off material to other people, hand off the editing, find a way to streamline the process. And they're right from a productivity perspective. They are not right from the perspective of trying to expand your skills, learn new things. And I recommend the process of doing things yourself directly. When you start taking meetings without worrying about the ROI of that meeting, you may experience an unexpected benefit. You may feel like you are gifting your time to others, especially if the meeting was at their request. They may not feel like it's a gift on their side, 
But think about what it feels like on your side, and you might find that it's a very useful use of your time. In short, stop doing everything. Clear your desk. Start afresh. But then fill it up by saying yes to just about everything, especially to outreach from former friends and colleagues. I now take calls about things that I am passionate about. Some might leave to work, some don't. Some I might get paid for, some I definitely don't. But uh, it feels a lot less like work and has a lot less pressure associated with it. So to all of my former colleagues and friends who want to debate this with me, please reach out to me. Apparently I have a lot of time on my hands.